It's Hello and welcome back to Wales, where we paint away the stress of everyday life. Um, if it's the first time you've watched one of my videos, then please click the subscribe button just down below there. There's a little me there. Um, please like, comment, share and subscribe. That's very important. I'm very close to 100,000 subscribers now, so any sharing would help the channel immensely. That means I can give you more content. I can. So, um, as you can see, I'm painting on a canvas. Today it's been pre-gestured, um, it's a 16 by 12. <laughs> um, I'm going to try and talk my way through this video as normal, but with a bit of laryngitis I've, I've had, maybe a little bit difficult. So there may be a, some quiet spots. <laughs> so I've put a, a coat of gesso on it, I put a ground on it, so I've, I've darkened the colour. Uh, before I look at the palette, um, I'm going to just draw a couple of vertical lines. Um, you don't have to be precise with this. I'm, I'm just going to draw a couple of vertical lines like this. There's one. I'm going to put another one maybe there. doesn't have to be accurate. You know me. I don't do anything precisely. <laughs> I'm going to put another one by there. And I'm going to put another one just off the edge like that. doesn't have to be perfect. There we are. What I'm painting today is a door. Hmm. That's quite an unusual thing to, to paint a door. Um, I've got a, an idea of putting something there as well, with a, like a padlock and stuff, which I've I've drawn out and traced. So that's going to make things a bit easier. But before we do that, let's have a look at the palette. And we're going to come back and, and paint the background first, and then paint the feature. That's not something I normally do. So, um, let's look. i got some Prussian blue. I've got some cadmium red. I've got some medium yellow, I've got some yellow ochre, I've got some raw sienna, I've got some burnt umber, I've got some black, and i got some white. And it's as simple as that, it's all the colours we need. I tend to use the same type of colours, and during this lesson I will show you my paints. The majority of my paints I make myself, I certainly do. Anyway, so I've got a little bit of tap water, there you go, that's important, and in that tap water... I'm just going to put a bit of my medium. This is a medium I make myself. It's available on the website. As most of you would know by now, I've got a little website where I sell some of my products. And I'm just going to stir that in there like that. So this time, I've thinned it down. But there's enough resin in that to actually stop the underbinding of paint. And if you don't know what underbinding of paint is, then just please check out one of my other videos, which is in the iCAD. Um, and that's it. So I'm going to decide what brush I'm going to use now. I haven't got anything out ready. Um, I'm just going to use a little short flat. There we are. I don't know what brush that is. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to get a little bit of moisture onto my palette. A little bit of white. I'm going to get a little bit of, a little bit of Prussian blue into there like that. And I'm just going to go brushing it down like that. There's a bit of contamination. A contamination and celebrations. I shouldn't sing really when I've got a croaky voice like this. Let's put a little bit of... You might be wondering, that's a stupid thing to do, Clive, is put a ground on, which has got a colour to it, and then paint white on top of it. Why didn't you just leave the canvas white? Because I want a bit of that colour to come through. You can see down there, hopefully, you can see a bit of the, the underlining colour coming through. So I'm going to kind of pick up a little bit of that burned umber, same brush. I'm just going to get that to a nice little edge. Nice little edge. I'm going to get my stick. And I'm just going to draw down a line. Like that. There you go. I'll do for now, get a little bit of kitchen roll, wipe in my brush clean, going back into this colour, a bit of white, it's gone a little bit grey now, it's got like a grey colour, I don't know if you noticed, because of the burnt umber, but that's okay, a little touch of blue, a little touch of blue, they got a little bit of yellow in there, just changing the colour up a bit, there we are, I'm just putting a bit of that on, there's a bit of colour coming off my brush, which, which has got a black in it, that's okay too. 
and we're just going to smooth this down like that. Getting a bit of that over there like that. Don't forget, I don't know what I was going to say, I was going to say something, don't forget something. This merging, this merging, very very thin layer of paint, a very thin layer of paint, a little bit of moisture, a little bit more white, let's get a little bit of yellow into that now, let's just warm that up a little bit with a bit of yellow, I'm just going to change the flavour, there we go, let's get a little bit of yellow down here, mixing a bit of colour in, still using the the brown, the background, the ground the, that we put down with the gesso. Gesso has got chalk in it. You can hear how, or you should be able to hear, how much grab that surface has got on it. And it helps with acrylic painting. Like, I can't explain how much this will help improve your acrylic painting. And some people would say, and which they have done, um, and made plenty of comments um, on other videos, um, if you want to read the comments, it's important that you can read the, the comments on the videos. And I try to get to them as quick as I can. Um, just mix a bit of blue in. Just continuing with that method. Why don't you, you just use acrylic paint instead of gesso? Well, if you put acrylic paint on you now, which I'm doing, it's going to dry with a plastic finish to it. And it's not going to be much grab. And the idea of the idea of this is basically to get the grab of the paint. You need the paint to grab to something. Acrylic paint doesn't like to stick in to anything that's um, to anything that's um, too shiny. Actually, I think I made a bit. Of, I think that line was made with a bit of black, by the way. It doesn't matter. I was worrying too much about what I was talking about and not concentrating enough on what I was painting. So we're going to get a bit of colour into this. And getting the, that line down there again. Just increasing that line. The start is starting to dry. Now if I paint over that, it can lift. That's not what we want. We don't want it to lift. Be careful. Just getting a bit of colour into there like that. I'm going to get a little bit of yellow on my brush. I've not cleaned my brush yet. And we don't mind if it turns a little bit muddy muddy. Because we want this, all these colours to merge and blend together like this. Get a bit of colour in there. Bring a bit of that yellow and white across there like that. Just getting that. Let's get a bit of let's get a bit of yellow down there. Just you can hear how dry that is now. I'm gonna stop and have a have a little sip of tea because my throat is getting really sore and this laryngitis is is it's a killer. It really is. What happened um a couple of weeks ago in fact was my wife and I we're walking across um, a pedestrianised crossing, a zebra crossing we call it in the UK. And it was between a supermarket and McDonald's. And we shop there in this particular supermarket every single week. What we do is we come out of, we come out of the supermarket and we buy one of these lottery scratch cards and we sit in a car and we pretend... We, we, we pretend when we think about what can we win if we won £10,000 what can we do with that money today and everybody does that don't they everybody does that so we were sitting in the car and we scratch our scratch cards and neither of us won anything we really didn't neither of us won anything so I said to the wife come on let's go and have a let's go and have a McDonald's let's go and have our McDonald's that's our tea we have a little treat once a week might not be a healthy option, but it doesn't really matter. We don't mind at our age. 
it's all about pleasure not so much about healthiness <laughs> let's get a little bit of let's get a little bit of raw sienna raw tends to be a bit transparent so just bear that in mind let's just put a bit of that down there like that and just mix this in there we go so off we popped and we got out of the car and then we were walking across the uh, the, the pavement or the sidewalk whatever you call it in your country and the car stopped for us to go across the zebra crossing and as we were halfway across this car came down without stopping i seen it from the corner of my eye i jumped out the way as i jumped out the way i grabbed my wife's hand i pulled her towards me but unfortunately at that particular moment the car ran straight into my wife and basically knocked her through the air and she landed on the grass verge very very poorly and very very luckily um, she escaped with injuries but not life-threatening injuries so I, I was grateful for that but you know it just comes to show that be very careful when you're crossing roads and things like this and and we all say even when we were kids always look right right and left and but we don't expect cars to come shoot in out of nowhere really and it, it, it was life-threatening or it could have been the injuries weren't life-threatening but this situation was for sure life-changing and um but Jane is getting better now. She's um, she's improved, and it was a bit of a shock, as you can imagine. Um, but I'm I'm I've been suffering a little bit myself now with um, with this cold and stuff, and I think that's all down to shock and all this other stuff. But yeah, it just goes to show. Never take life for granted. It's a bit like a painting. Never take a painting for granted because you don't know. What could happen during the painting? Now I'm going across horizontally now. I'm just dragging very lightly, loading my brush up very low, uh, lightly with um, paint. And I'm just dragging, getting a little bit of burnt umber now. And I'm just dragging across the grain. You can see, I hope you can see the... I'm just picking up the texture of the, of the canvas. And I can do that. I can do that. Because... Um, the paint is dry this side. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to wash my brush out. I'm going to dry this canvas really well. And that's virtually my background done. I am going to add a little bit more colour to it in a second before we take it to the next stage. And then we'll put the tracing on and then we'll start the detail. But that's quite an easy way to, to get a background started. What I'm trying to do now is just draw a bolt I did start drawing this and then I realised, hang on a minute, you're gonna sh you should video this. <laughs> so, what I'm doing is just drawing a bolt at the moment. We need a uh, things there like that. I want to look rustic if I can. Like as if it's a, a, an old door or gate or something. There we go. You'll see what I'm doing in a second, hopefully. <laughs> so we want to
with this type of So we got a we got a bolt. Somebody's just <laughs> locked it and just put the the, the the bolt across. We've all done that, haven't we? We've all done that. There we go. A couple of nails in the door like that. So we go. There you go. We've got that um, sorted. That's the drawing part done. So let's get on to the painting. So the drawing is done. That's a good thing. Now we've got to just put some detail and stuff in there. But before we do that, let's have a look at my palette. What paints do you use, Clive? This is another question I get asked a lot. Well, in my little drawers, you can see there's my full range of my own particular brand of paint. And I make these paints myself by hand in this studio. And I've got a full range of paints there. Um, I've even got... Um, my own Lowry mixes. Um, this is what Lowry, the um, the famous artist, used. Um, I got his I got his palette there. So if I'm going to recreate the painting, I recreate the palette, like a Monet palette, etc. I don't use my own paints. I mix paints specifically for that painting. But we're we're diverse. I've also got a mixture of different other like Galleria, Windsor Newtons, and Dale and Roney paints as well. I got the artist range there. These are my other mixtures of paints that I bought over the years, like Liquitex and Galleria and um, and all those other makes there, golden I've got. So I've got, a, I've got a, a vast variety of colours. This is my other little drawer. This is where I keep all my little mixing pots, my hammer and all that other stuff. And down here then is all my drawing materials, my pastels and my watercolour pencils and all my drawing equipment. So that's a quick look into my drawers. Er, matron, <laughs> you've looked in my drawers. Oh no, is it come to that? <laughs> so let's go on to the painting. Um, now you've looked in my drawers. <laughs> let's get a short flat, a little short flat, a flatty flat, a short flat. Yes, and I got my bit my water, and my medium mix back by there. Okay, let's get some Prussian blue. Get some Prussian blue. Get some Prussian blue. Let's mix a bit of white with that Prussian blue. There we go. Let's get a light Prussian blue. Get a bit of burnt umber into that Prussian blue as well. So we've got a mixture of burnt umber, Prussian blue, and a little bit of white. Let's get a bit more mixed up. There we go. There we are. So we've got a couple of different colours there. There's your burnt umber going into your burnt umber mix. And that's Prussian blue and white there. So let's just take a little bit of moisture off my brush. And let's just start coming down. So this is a mixture of burnt umber, fresh and blue, and I'm just a tad of white. And all we do is block it out, like we do everything else. This is all about layers and building up layers. And that's the most important thing. We've got to try and keep these, these lines sharp if we can. There you go. So let's just paint over those, because we know they're there. There's no paint paint around them. This is not painting by numbers, this is painting with Clive. There we go. So we put another line then across there. Just darken that up. Just a touch. Let's just go down that edge. If you find that your paint your paintbrush is starting to drag, get a little bit of moisture. Just a touch. Don't dap it in the water like don't do that. That's not what you want to do. All you need to do is just tap it on the side like that. Just get a little, little bit of moisture. If it's too much, take some moisture off on some kitchen paper, go back into your paint, and then you'll find it'll run a bit smoother. It will. So this is a little bit lighter. This is the, the Prussian blue, the burnt amber, with a little bit of white. So we've got a, a, a different tone of colour in the same spectrum as that. It's just a lighter version of that. And that's going to give us depth there you go I don't want you to rush this one with me today if you're going to paint along with me which you can do then just take your time 
you've got a pause button on the video I've not got a pause button on my camera so I'll try to paint this in real time if I can or real time as far as video is concerned anyway so I'm adding just a little bit more white and I'm coming down here I'm just lighting that color just a touch more just to give it that essence of it's a bit it's, it's, it's shadows there we are creating shadows all you do is when you paint you paint light light and color it's all we paint and we go paint and light and color and things just look like things that we recognize <laughs> it's not it's not hard is it as I nearly said it's not hard it's not easy but it's not hard really is it if you think about it adding a bit more blue into that there you go nice and rough rustic looking type of thing let's get a bit of that light color I'll just put that across the top there like that so bringing a bit more white into this let's look at just bringing a little bit of color in and then we can leave it that bit as a that for the moment so using the same color because we got it on a brush I mean we just as well now I'm, I'm sitting on a funny angle here so I'm gonna try and get a nice sharp edge across there continue to paint that in like that we got a bit of this color coming down this side we round round off that corner make it look a little bit we, we, we can put some sharp lines in later on just to give this a little bit more depth but like the background all we're doing really is building up different tones of color there you go different tones of colour. I want to get some burnt umber on my brush now. I'm going to bring a bit of burnt umber in. It looks drastic, I know. Bring a bit of burnt umber in there, like that. Because this is going to be all rusty, isn't it, if you think about it. This is a rusty old bit of metal back into the Prussian blue and white not not cleaning my brush trying to get that color I'm using a little bit of red now a little bit of cardamom red just on the tip of my brush let's get that because that's going to mix with the blue on my brush it's going to give it a bit of a, a purpley tone there you go wash my brush now I'm washing my brush why am I washing my brush because I want to go into some raw sienna and some red so mixing raw sienna and red together to get that rusty um, burnt oxide type of color you can bring a little bit of yellow to it that's going to orange it up a touch you can see how you can change what a wonderful color that can be it's a bit like a red oxide so we need to Put a bit of red here and there like that, just to represent maybe some rust. We can paint this in the same colour. Very lightly like that. Make sure my big head's not in the shot. We can bring a bit of that across there. Like that. I'm trying to keep these lines sharp. Don't do what I'm doing. I'm making this bigger than what it should be, but try and keep these lines straight and sharp. You've got a lot more time to work on this than I have. This is quite a detailed painting really for, for a lesson. But adding a bit more red to this. I know you can do it. I know you can do it. 
So make me proud and show me what you've done. Drop me a line, drop me a comment. Go along to my Facebook page. Post your pictures and show me what you what you're doing and how you've done. And I can help you if you want me to. Don't forget the community tab on the on the main channel page. That's where I'll post and you can get notifications if you're in my community. Community is very important. Community is where I will give you notifications of up and coming events and things like that. And when I've hit my hundred thousand subscriber, I will will be doing live videos. I will. There you go. a bit more rust in there like that using the same brush burned umber red burned umber and that red this is just going to red up the brown now it's going to red up the brown i'm going to put a black which is going to darken it i'm going to add a bit of white now to it watch this now a bit more black How's that look? That looks quite nice. That looks like a looks like a rusty type of metal colour. Put a bit of that in as an under colour. There like that. Don't want too much of this colour. A little bit of down there maybe a bit there there you go wash my brush how's this doing it's nearly dry that side I'm just trying to build a few layers going back into the Prussian blue and white now spreading it in to think of it as our background what we were doing with our background these colors should all work well together they should work well together spend a little bit of time don't be a, don't be in a rush when you're painting like this because I got to rush a little bit because of the video itself, but when you were painting, don't rush, just enjoy it, just kick back and relax, as they say. Can you see? Can you see what I'm doing? I hope you can. I hope you can. I'm going to bring a bit of this blue in here and there now. Maybe this was painted blue. Maybe it's just got rusty and the wind has been blowing and the rain's been pouring and all these things have happened to this door and this. So many people have been back and forth this door, in and out and been well used. Maybe it's a stable door or something. Who knows? I don't know. Maybe it's just a stable door. Or not so stable these days because it's all rotten. <laughs> Let's just get a little bit of light there. Like that. Just, just looking for where the light could possibly fall. Give me a little bit of a light refraction and stuff. There you go. There you are. I 
I'll tell you what, it could be a little bit. Let's get a little bit of Prussian blue, a little bit of red. This purple colour, a bit of burnt umber. There you go. Let's get a little bit of shadow in here. Bring that out. Just a touch like that. Just to make it stand out, just a touch like that. There you go. A little bit of shadow under there, maybe. Shadow, just gonna have a bit of dust, and I don't know what this is, it could be anything, but maybe there you go, put a bit of that in there and play around with that in a second. I'm just gonna change my brush a little bit more, um, a little bit more. I can't change your brush a little bit more, okay? I'm gonna get a detailed brush again, going into this Prussian blue and that. Now. I'm gonna get my stick. And I want to make this stand out to touch now. There you go. Is that burned on my red colour? Blue white, burn number. Just light that edge up a touch there. I'll come back to that in one second. Let's go back into this light color, this Prussian blue. Let's put this other retainer in it's going to come down there get this dark color let's paint that in there and get some white And some yellow. So add a little bit of brightness. I just want to get this. Padlock in. This is a fun one. This is different. It's not a landscape and it's not a portrait and it's to learn. You can learn all different tones and lights and shadows. When you paint something like this, it's a lot more beneficial because it's It could, you can be bordering on an abstract if you wanted to really push it. Um, but painting something like this is always a good idea because I just love to be able to be as versatile as possible in my approach to painting because normally I paint pet portraits. That's where I make my income um, as far as art is concerned. But YouTube has taught me over the years that um, to be versatile with your art helps you 
with your your normal art, if that makes any sense. Don't be afraid to paint anything. Every, everything can be turned into a work of art. Any subject. Don't limit yourself. Don't limit the possibilities of what of what you can paint. Because you start limiting yourself, then you're going to be restrictive. And by being restrictive, you're limiting your abilities. So it's 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 um it's a catch situation really if you think about it so we need to be versatile that's all I'm trying to say see that that's pencil marker eh? mixing with the paint isn't that fun how that can happen like that and these block out stages are good because you can just paint whatever can't even just be relaxed and, and free look at that charcoal is mixing with the, the the carbon is mixing from the pencil with the paint and allowing you to use it as a shade which is great really and it's going to fix in place so it's going to bind the acrylic it's going to fix in place and you, it's out there on it i'm not to find you haven't had to do that. It's, it's, work, it's done itself. So you, you don't have to work hard at some things. If it works, it works. Oh, lovely. Right, nice cup of tea. That was really nice, actually. And it's given my chance for my painting to dry. And I'm not afraid to tell you that sometimes I do take a break and come back to filming. Because you can't do things in 20 minutes or 30 minutes. And expect everything to be perfect because life isn't like that life is not perfect and anybody tells you anything different well they could be fibbing mm -hmm. yes so don't be afraid take your time there's no there's no point in rushing anything especially with art art is not meant to be rushed so i'm trying to find myself a detail brush as i'm waffling on you now I'm going to get myself a short inch brush, there we are, short flat, as I'm in number 10. Um, and I'm going to do my little trick around here now before I work on the background. So what I want is a nice thin wash. There we go, a little bit of colour. And I'm thinly going to wash over that colour. Like that. Now you can do this with my media mix which is that one which is available on the website www.cly5art.co.uk and you won't get any paint lift or you shouldn't get any paint lift if you use it correctly you can use plain tap water i am not going to say for a minute that you can't but what you will find is that paint will eventually peel away and it is not what you want at all this is a very, very thin glaze of colour, basically. I'll go over the the latch, you know, the, the padlock, so you can see what I mean. It's just basically staining what's underneath, which works out really well in some cases for shadows and stuff. So you can use this method, but over the years, um, I've developed a couple of products that I use specifically um, for acrylics and they seem to work really well they're very stable they're very archival and um, all in all i'm happy with the way i work so that's all it counts really and if it works for me i'm happy for it to work for you it takes a long time to master acrylics but once you've mastered them then it's amazing what you can do with them. So I'm, I'm going into a little bit of raw sienna now. And I'm just going to add a little bit more colour of rust, maybe. A little bit of red. Maybe a little bit redder. There you go. There's no real set pattern to this. It is what it is. I'm going to get some blue. Burn number. 
and our blue and white that which we started the painting off with. I'm just adding a bit of colour here and there and then here. A little bit more blue. I want to get a little bit more. I put a bit too much paint on my brush then. It's gone a lot darker than I thought. So what I'm going to do is get some tissue paper and I'm just going to slightly roll that off like that. And I'm going to brush in with a dryish type of brush, a semi-dry brush. Just getting a bit of shadow in. Leaving our blue undertone because I quite like that it gives a little bit more depth I think but I think what I'm going to do up here is I'm going to get a bit of black a bit of burnt umber and black again a little bit of moisture I don't want to overdo this I get a little bit of shadow effect in there as well I might come down me think a little bit more there Definitely there. There you go. Let's get that line. Spend some time on the don't 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 be quick like me. I was a little bit quick then with that and that's not what you want to do, you wanna dry brush in. Like this if this rust has been let's get a little bit of red coming onto this. And the rust has been running down the the wood of that the, that door like that. Let's just do a bit more rust effect here. Maybe a bit more there, like that. It's darkening underneath there a little bit. Let's get a little bit of this blue color just down the side of this. This is dry brush. Bit of shading here and there, and there, yeah. A bit of that rust there, a little bit of rust there, a little bit of rust dripping down there, like that. I'll tell you what, we'll do. I'm just going to put that brush in there. I'm going to pick up my detail brush. I'm going to, where's my um, right, let's get some burned umber. Prussian blue, it's burned ember, a bit of white. And let's build on these. Um, I, want, I want a bit darker than that, there's a bit of black to it. So, there's one there, and there's one there. moisture because we needed the run there we go a bit of shadow in there like that a line down there just to give a bit more emphasis there you go and we're gonna put a hole in there because our bolt has rusted and fallen off and we're gonna put another 
bolt there like that. There you go. Let's draw this line on there now. A bit darker. We need a bit, a bit more black to it. You see, I don't use a lot of moisture. It's not so much a line. It's more of a shadow. I'm just going to get uh, my brush and uh, just wipe it dry in some tissue paper. And uh, again. I'm just going to smooth that line off. Bring it out together like that. Back into this dark colour. Molly's barking up there now. Again, dry brush. Like that. Just a little bit of shadow on that. Let's put a little bit of this definition onto that there. A little bit there, a little bit there, there you go. Now it's starting to look a little bit something, so I'm just going to wash my brush very quickly. Um, I'm going to go into this white and Prussian blue that we made earlier, and then we're going to put a little bit of light. Touch the top of these nuts. Like that. I'm going to put a bit of light just catching the side of this. There we go. Just a little bit of light across the top of there. that and again we want to put a bit of light across the top here like that maybe just a little bit just coming down there like that some light on here just to give it a little bit of a dimension and again a little bit of light going across top like that. Take your time, take your time, don't rush this. If it's too much, get your brush, smooth it in like that. There you go. Get a bit more blue, a bit more white. So this is catching a light more there. Again, just thinking of water, uh, thinking of water, water, <laughs> thinking of light, and where things are going to possibly catch the light. There you go. You can see what I'm doing now. We're going to put another little boat track shape there. We'll put another boat shape there like that coming to that in a minute so we want a bit of the yellow into this now because this is going to be like a gold color it's a padlock at the end of the day so it could be silver or it could be gold whatever you whatever color you want to paint this really it doesn't really matter we could we could put some white in 
No, just to get that feeling that it's just catching the light there, like this. There you go. Go back into our black, and then we're going to put our retainer. In, that's where the padlock goes into and locks. There's always a little lip out of it like that. Um, very quickly, let me think. Let's get a little bit of this burnt ember and Prussian blue mix and just let's just put a little bit of shadow just underneath there like that. You don't want to work on this too much because we're coming to the end of the lesson now. Again, as I've said before, this is all about working. You need to work on this. You need to work on this a lot. Um, let's put a little bit of light there and there. This is where the nails are. So we just want a little bit of light. Let's get back into this colour. Let's put some shadow into these little boats and things. A little bit of black just to put our nail head in there. Looks like a nail. We can get our thin, thin, thin script lining brush. This is a very long, thin handled one. You need to mix the paint quite thinly for this. What I'm going to do now is just put in a few lines like this, just to, to remember those lines we put in in the first place. Well, that's where these come come in. These are the boards of the of the the door that we painted. Okay, now we'll brush again. Smoothly just taking those rough edges away. Adding a little bit of shadow in. By maintaining the, that essence that is a The latch there, we can see the latch, it's coming to life. We need to add, I'm just looking at it now, I need to put a little bit more shadow into this area. Just using this brush. And I'm just going to pull that across with this brush, like that. What that's going to do is going to make the, the padlock stand away. It's going to make the padlock stand away there. So just add a bit of this there. Let's get a little bit of this rusty colour now. Get a bit of print number in there. And go to town. Enjoy it. Add more colour. Look at look at your painting and decide where you want the rust and things that look as if it's been running down. Weather the wood. That's important. To weather the wood. Let's put a little bit of wash sienna down in here. Dry brushing, not brushing hard. I'm not, I don't put a loads of thick paint on, but what I do do is I make the layers work for me, and you can have a nice, a nice painting then, which looks quite realistic. So you don't need to worry about 
all these thick layers of paint and you know sometimes when you're painting like this the, the way that, that the speed acrylics dry can be your friend the speed acrylics dry can be your friend in a lot of cases so never forget that in fact I think I'm gonna just get a little bit of lighter color very lightly into there like that maybe a little bit of lighter color up to there just lightly brushing this in now hardly touching the canvas Again, my detail brush, it's not a detail brush, it's the script line in brush. Again, put in this line across the bottom like that. Take your time, take your time. It's like painting the horizon line, the um, <laughs> straighter you can get a line like this better but I am starting to rush it a little bit now so it's fine it's get a little bit of flack here and there and there and here Maybe it was painted black one day ago, I don't know. Put a bit of shadow. Put a bit of shadow line in. Just underneath those. There you go. And there we got it. We we are, we are there. So please like, comment, share and subscribe. Um please give me a thumbs up. If you like what you've seen today then as i said don't miss out by not subscribing please subscribe i upload every monday without fail even after my wife's had an accident <laughs> so i do upload every week on a monday at 7 30. so please have a go with this it is something different for you to have a to get your teeth into i will do my best to get this actual um drawing onto my website which is www clay5art.co.uk um, you can pop along there you can see all other different things that I've got for sale please pop along to my shop and have a look what you think let me know if, you, if there's any improvements I can make and um, until then have a nice day and um, I'll see you on the next one